Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. The VSR-700 prototype performs its first autonomous free flight. The first QF-16 full-scale aerial target is complete. And the E-Hang-216 obtains a special flight operation certificate. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. The prototype of Airbus Helicopters VSR 700 UAS performed its first free flight last week, flying for a total of 10 minutes at a drone test center in the south of France. This significant step in the program follows the prototype's first flight, which took place back in November 2019, when the UAS had to be tethered to comply with the regulatory requirements. To enable this free flight, Airbus helicopters implemented geofencing, which enabled and justified a flight clearance from airworthiness authorities, as well as a flight termination system. The VSR-700 is an unmanned aerial system in the 500 to 1,000 kilogram maximum takeoff weight range. It offers the best balance of payload, capability, endurance, and operational costs. It is capable of carrying multiple full-size naval sensors for extended periods, and can operate from existing ships alongside a helicopter with a low logistical footprint. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Let's take a quick look at news making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. It's time for today's Unmanned Minute. AUVSI Exponential 2020 will now be held as a fully interactive virtual event on October 5th through the 8th due to large gatherings and travel restrictions put in place due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The trade show and conference was originally scheduled to be held on May 4th through the 7th at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center and was postponed to October 5th through the 8th at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center in Dallas before being moved to a virtual format. More information on the virtual event, schedule of programming, and registration will be posted in the coming weeks at exponential.org. The FCC has fined Hobby King over $2.8 million for marketing drone transmitters which did not comply with FCC licensing rules. Hobby King markets devices that provide a video link between transmitters mounted on an unmanned aircraft system and users flying drones. An FCC investigation found that dozens of devices marketed by the company transmitted in authorized radio frequency bands and in some cases operated at excessive transmission power levels. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Northrop Grumman, and Brevard Zoo have teamed up to launch a drone-based surveillance effort to better understand the behavior of sea turtles along Florida's space coast. Called the Turtle Tech Project, the effort will use both the Applied Aeronautics Albatross UAV and the DJI Matrice 210 to provide crucial conservation insights as well as paying jobs for students. The team will use the Albatross to do the initial wide area scouting, since the UAV can cover more ground for a longer period of time. Once a turtle of interest is spotted, the Matrice will then be sent out to capture finer grain images of the turtles, identifying any unique markers or patterns on the animal's shell. If you want to win a free King Schools course, kneeboard and flight bag, 
Send us a story suggestion to news by at arrow-news.net by August 31st. Each story will give you one entry, and each contestant is allowed to enter up to five times. Additionally, you can enter to win by filling out our reader survey by clicking the link in the description below. The survey is limited to one entry per person, but can be counted along with any new story suggestions submitted. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. A team from Boeing and the U.S. Air Force completed the first QF-16 full-scale aerial target to undergo conversion from a modification line in Arizona. The aircraft was flown last month to Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida, where it will be used autonomously in future weapons training operations. The 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, located at the Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Tucson, teamed up with Boeing under a public-private partnership to create a second modification line to supplement ongoing QF-16 work at Boeing Cecil Field site in Jacksonville, Florida. Conversion of the F-16A-C aircraft to the unmanned QF-16 configuration requires modification of the airframe and installation of major components. The QF-16 performs both autonomous maneuvers through Autoland and controlled maneuvers through ground stations. Boeing began converting retired F-16s into QF-16s in 2015. More than 120 aircraft are on contract to be modified, with over 40% already delivered. The E-Hang 216 has obtained a special flight operations certificate from Transport Canada making it the first of its kind to receive a permit for periodic operation of passenger-grade AAVs in North America. With this certificate, EHANG can now routinely conduct trial flights of their 216 in Quebec province. This achievement may become an important foundation for future urban air mobility operations in Canada. On this accomplishment, EHANG founder, chairman, and CEO Huang Zihu stated, We are pleased to see EHANG 216 receiving such an important certificate from TCCA. Following consecutive flight approvals received from aviation authorities in different countries, including the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, the Civil Aviation Authority of Norway, and the Civil Aviation Administration of China. It conveys a positive signal from global regulators to establish a supportive and sustainable regulatory environment for the UAM industry. And that was our last story for today. We appreciate you tuning in, and if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. If you'd like more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, then head over to auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. Have a great rest of your day and come back Friday to wrap up the week with an episode of Airborne Unlimited. <laughs>